And those of you who made movies know that no matter how well you plan stuff out, there's always something that's gonna go wrong. And the problem is, it's usually something that you don't even plan for in the first place, and then you're trying to figure it out on set while trying not to freak everybody out in the process. One of these, um, dramatic problems happened to me while I was in film school. It was a weekend shoot, and it was a Sunday. The way our class worked, two people would get to shoot on the weekend, and then two other people would shoot on the following weekend, and so on. So anyway, we were on the parking lot of my old high school on that Sunday, and that is where the problems came up. Ooh. Wait, why do I have a ghost here? First, I had no clue the lot was going to be packed, and I mean very packed, but the problem is that there was like a football or soccer game going on, and it was going to be a nightmare for sound. Secondly, I had no extras. I told my brother to be an extra, well, well, okay, he had no choice, and then I asked him to see if he can call somebody to be an extra too. Luckily, he knew somebody, and they stepped in real quick, so I had everything ready, and I was ready to rumble, and I was good to go, and I was confident. Murphy's Law, you can kiss my you-know-what. So we started shooting, and you know how us indie filmmakers are, we like to get angles, we like to get shots from every single angle possible, even angles that we're not even gonna use. Yeah, I think we overdo it sometimes though. Fast forward to about an hour later. We're in between takes, we're starting to get ready to go for the next shot, and I turned around to talk to a crew member, I don't know who it was, but it was a crew member, and next thing I know, I hear... A loud, crashing sound. So I quickly turned around, knowing it's something bad, Next thing you know, I see the camera and tripod lying on the pavement. Mind you, this is not my gear, this is the school's gear. The tripod I was on, it was one of those old school wood tripods. Counting the fact that the parking lot was not on even ground, it was more of a slope, and now you understand why it happened. Was the lens cracked? Was the filter on it cracked? Did the film become exposed to light? Did the camera even run now? On the outside, I was trying to be as cool, calm, and collected as I could. But who am I kidding? They probably saw the look on my face and they probably knew it was bad. See, we're told as directors we're not supposed to panic on set because if you do, then everybody else starts panicking around you. It's like a virus. It's like, well, it's like a zombie apocalypse. Well, okay, maybe not. This is where I also remember the professor telling us about equipment in class. If you break it, you pay for it. And with those wonderful thoughts in mind, we all looked down at the camera and tripod like it was some sort of sacred relic that we had ruined and we would be cursed for life because of it. Okay, maybe that's not how it felt, but at the time it felt like that. Not only this, but I also had to shoot two months later because we were close to holiday break and I had to reschedule everything. Luckily, it went off without a hitch two months later. So in conclusion, if you're gonna buy or even rent a camera, get a good tripod too. You know why? Because then you're really gonna find out how much that camera really costs. So guys, what do you think? I'm doing a few animated videos like this to talk about my filmmaking mishaps, my filmmaking nightmares that I had. I thought it would be fun to do this. I might do a few random vlogs like this too, so stay tuned for those. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time. See you next video.